Okay, well, hello and welcome to our monthly virtual lecture. As a reminder, this lecture is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel in the coming days. Uh, my name is Christopher Davis and I'm pleased to announce, uh, introduce our uh, today's speaker, Carla Gonzalez. Uh, today she'll show you how to import drill hole data and various options of visualization that are offered through Geoscience Analyst. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to type them in the Q&A or raise your hand. Uh, please be aware that Carla may wait till the end to answer the question, uh, and she's about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so Carla, take it away. All right, thanks, Chris. Uh, let's get started. So I've got a blank Geoscience Analyst project right now, and the first thing that I'll do is go import some drill holes. So to do that, I'll go to File, Import, ASCII, and then Drill Holes. So this window will pop open uh, where I can import my drill hole files. So I'll go select my colors file. That will be DDH colors. And I'll just do a quick preview of the CSV. It's got a whole ID an XYZ associated with that whole ID and an end of hole depth or length. Then we've got our survey file. So I'll go get that one, DDH survey. And that one is a whole ID a distance down hole, and an azimuth and dip at each distance. Next up, I'll go get the interval logs. So that'll be my assays and my geology logs. And that one is a whole ID, a from and to, and then assays. In this case, I've got silver, grounds per ton, I've also got copper percent, etc. And the geology file looks very similar to that. It's got a whole ID, a from and to, and then my geology log. So next up, I'll go find my point log. So that will be my structural and my geophysics. The last quick preview is the geophysics has a whole ID, a distance down hole, and then it has geophysical data associated to it, like maxes or p-velocity. And the structural is the same format. It's got a whole ID and a distance down hole. And then you've got strike and dip, and in this case, we've also got a structural code associated with every structural measurement. So now that I've selected all my files, I can click OK. And this window will pop open that is just uh, verifying that the required fields are matched up with the proper columns in your file. In this case, we're looking at the color. And you'll see that here it's, lo it's looking for a borehole ID. So that will correspond to the to our column whole ID. In case that's not correct, you can always go in and select a different column. And then the XYZ coordinates are properly matched up to the XYZ columns, as well as the final depth with the length column. I'll click OK, and it'll do that for all of them. I've already gone through these, so I know they're good. So now they've imported. So it's always a good tip to look at the console panel, see if there's any warnings or errors. In this case, it told me that the procedure is completed successfully. So that's a good sign. Then in my objects tree, I'll see I've got a new drill holes group that's called DDH colors. And within that group, I've got all of my drill holes. In the viewport, you'll be able to see all of your drill holes in 3D. And uh, I'll just take off the name because it's getting a little crowded up there. Great, so I'll just select a drill hole. I'll select 4Q15, for example. So you'll see that it's now highlighted in yellow in the objects tree. It's also highlighted in yellow in the viewport. The visual parameters is gonna give me the parameters for 4Q15. And I've got the data table updated to give me the 4Q15 data. So it'll tell me that this is a drill hole. This is its color location. This is its end of hole location. This is the length of the drill hole. And then I can also look at its path if I click on this button right here. So that'll pop up a window that has information like the wireline depth, the dip and azimuth at that depth, the true depth, and the lift and swig. So now I'll move on to the interval logs and I'll paint by geology name. And I'll do that by clicking on this paint bucket right here. I'll just zoom in a little bit more. So you'll see here that this reddish color corresponds to the hit information, the blue corresponds to the mill rock member. You can change these colors if you want to. You can do that manually. In this case, I've already done this. 
and uh, I saved out the color settings. So right now I'll just load them in. Like that. So that's the, that's the colors that I had already assigned to the classes beforehand. So now what you can do is that you can click on these eyes right here to show or hide a particular class. For example, like this. If you only want to show one of them, like the Middle Rock member, you can select it and then click on this eye that says show only selected. So now you can see only that one. And that could be handy as well for the or body, for example. To put them all back, you can click on this view all button. Now it's all back. So that was the geology logs. Next I'll show uh, how to visualize your assay data. So to do that, I'll, I'll paint by copper percent. And again, I'll just zoom in a little bit more. So down here, I update it to show me the, some basic statistics of copper percent, a quick histogram, and I can also play with this slider and these filters. For example, if I put in a minimum of 1.5, now I'm only going to be seeing values that are larger than 1.5. And I can play around with this as much as I want. I can make this one smaller on that side as well. And to go back to the original color settings or clip values, sorry, you can just click on, on this button right here. Now, you can also change the log style. You can make that a line or bring it back to a cylinder. You can change the size of it. You can make it transparent or not. And you can scale by a log. So this cool little feature will let you scale by another property. For example, here, zinc percent. So now what we're visualizing is two different data at the same time. The color corresponds to copper percent, while the, the, the radius of the log will correspond to zinc percent. So you can see if there's any relationships between the two of them. So that's it for assay data. Next up, I'll look up some structural data. So I'll just get the drill hole that has structural data. And I'll view only that one. Here you go. So I'll just make this a little smaller and I'll turn on the orientation parameter. And I'll select the data group strike and dip. I'll also unpaint by copper percent, sorry. So that data group was created automatically upon import. The importer is able to recognize the words strike and dip and know that they should be associated with each other to create this data group. And then now, right now, we're visualizing the orientation as 2D arrows, uh, but I find it's more intuitive to look at them as tablets. So I'll do that and I'll make them a little bit thicker. So now you can see this, whoops, sorry, I'll just get this back on. Uh, so now we can see these structural measurements on the drill hole. Now you can also paint those by, let's say, our structural code. And you'll see here that the red is associating with bedding one code, the blue is associated with foliation one, and you can select one or the other and view only that one. And this way you can see if there's any trend in your structures by viewing only that structure's 3D tablets. Great, so using the same hole, I'll take a look at the profile parameter. So I'll just turn that on and select the data copper percent. I'll change the color really quickly. Maybe a blue would be better here. So now I'm looking at copper percent down hole. I can add more than one data. I can add zinc percent, for example. And again, I'll just switch this color really quickly like that. Now I can scale them by, by changing these numbers on scale right here, but I can also scale in the camera. And then I can drag these to make them a little bit bigger or smaller. I think here it might be easier to compare the two. So you can start comparing your two, your two assay logs. Um, in this case, I find it's a little bit hard to see when they're on top of each other. You might like that. Um, I'll just show how to change the angle of them so that that's not a thing. So here in the zinc percent, I'll change the angle to 180. And now they're perpendicular to each other. So I can view them and compare them as such. I can also add a crossover. For example, here I can add a crossover of negative one. 
Same thing down here, another crossover of negative one. And then I can turn on an interval log, for example, geology name. And I can make that a little bit smaller. So now I can start going down my drill hole and seeing if these peaks and throws in copper and zinc percent are associated with each other, or if maybe they're associated with a certain lithology, or maybe between contacts between lithologies. And just like I've shown this with assay data, I'll do the same thing with geophysics logs. So I'll just find a drill hole that has geophysical data. Here we go. I'll turn on the profiles. I'll put on uh, Maxis, and then I'll change the color as well. A little bit darker. Here we go. And I'll choose another one, for example, Da, 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 where's density? There it is. Make it a little bit thicker here. And I can change this, uh, this scale, for example, put this to 200 so that you can see the ups and downs a little bit better. I can also change the angle of them and I'll put in a crossover. And similar to how we did it with the assays, we can look down hole to see if these two, these two logs are associated with each other. And that's it. That was how to view your geology logs, your assay logs, structural data, and geophysical logs. So I hope that these tips are useful to you. Thanks, that was great. Uh, is there any questions? Feel free to use the Q&A. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of time here. Okay, it doesn't look like there are any questions. Uh, if you have any future questions, um, you can always ask support at mirageoscience.com. Uh, so thank you, Carla, and thank you for everyone who joined us today for this lecture. Uh, please join us next month when we demonstrate the new features introduced in the upcoming version of Geoscience Analyst version 3.1. Uh, and that's slated to be released later this month. Thank you, bye. Oh, Q&A. <laughs> of course. We do have one Q&A right before we leave. So uh, if you can see that, um, there's a Q&A about oil and gas logs into a profile. Right. Um, would that be like porosity? Oh, you would like to answer that question, Chris? <laughs> uh, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> um, would that be things like porosity and uh, that kind of data? And I guess that would also be just numeric data similar to the assays, and you can visualize it in very similar ways. And correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Nope, you're right. Um, that's exactly exactly it. Uh, these are all very general uh, for interval endpoints. So, great. Great. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone.